Andrew Scheer called out Speaker Fergus for his double standards and requests that the Prime Minister be duly punished. Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a great day. Well, question period today was kind of ruckus. However, nothing really significant happened, or at least not in my opinion. After question period, though, there was the non-confidence vote. Let's take a look at the results. Le bureau va maintenant compiler les... The table will now compile the results of the vote. No. Yes, pour 121, 121. Yes, pour 207, 207. I declare the motion defeated. Of course, we all knew that would fail. After that, however, there were points of order, and those points of order may be significant. The speaker made rulings on two points of order, and that brought rise to a third point of order. The first ruling had to do with Garnet Genesis' comments last week in the House. Let's take a look at what his ruling was. I am now ready to rule on the point of order raised on, on sorry, on September, September, Wednesday, September 25, 2024, by the member for Edmonton Griesbach concerning comments made during question period that same Wednesday. Midway through question period that day, at a point when the chair was standing and calling the House to order, heckles coming from one side of the House could be heard. The source of the comment was not immediately apparent to the chair, nor was it to the editors of debates, who attributed them to, quote, an honourable member, unquote. After question period, the member for Edmonton Griesbach rose on a point of order, claiming the comments were clearly homophobic and asking the chair to look into the matter. Several other members referred to this specific situation the following day, on Thursday, September 26, pressing the chair to rule on it. At some point, accusations were made directly toward the member for Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan, who was suspected to have said the alleged words. Just avant la période des questions, jeudi dernier. La... Just before question period, Thursday, the chair made a ruling on decorum and unparliamentary language. The chair will repeat one of the quotations used in that ruling as indicated on page 624 of the House of Commons Procedures and Practice, 3rd edition, and I quote, In dealing with unparliamentary language, the speaker takes into account the tone, manner, and intention of the member speaking. The person to whom the words at issue were directed, the degree of provocation, and most important, whether or not the remarks created disorder in the chamber. End of quote. Park, Fort... The member for Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan, rose and admitted to having made the statement in question, but explained the context in which it was made and also explained his intentions in making the statement. He maintained that his comment was meant to criticize government spending and that no slur was intended. ...that are clearly meant to denigrate someone due to their sexual orientation or make insinuations about someone's sexual orientation would not be acceptable in the House. While the member for, Fort, uh, sorry, for Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan, has vigorously denied that this was his intent, and the chair is, is prepared to take him at his word, I would invite him to reflect upon how his comments could have been interpreted and to recognize that they provoked disorder. The situation underscores certain principles that should govern our actions in this chamber. First, the importance of not shouting out comments across the floor. And second, to avoid jokes that others would interpret as hurtful or offensive. We all have a responsibility to choose our words carefully. It is in this context that I invite the member for that I will invite the member from Fort from Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan, to withdraw his remarks, and to do so at the earliest possible opportunity. I thank all members for their attention. As you can see, the speaker accepted Garnett's claim that it was not meant to be a homophobic comment, and that his comment just referred to financial issues. But the speaker did rule that Garnet's comments were disruptive to the House, and he invited Garnet to withdraw those comments at the earliest possible moment. Then the speaker spoke to a point of order brought up by Heather McPherson. 
Heather McPherson claimed that the member for Calgary Heritage violated the rules of Parliament when he insulted Jagmeet Singh. Let's go to the Calgary Heritage members' comments in the House. The Honourable Member for Calgary Heritage. An unforgiving carbon tax on food, gas and home heating. One in four skipping meals. Two million lined up at food banks. Last year, the Calgary Food Bank saw demand surge by nearly 35 percent. A record level. Families are crying for help. And where's the NDP? Well, in the worst sellout of all time, he ripped up his coalition papers only to tape them back together. He keeps the prime minister in power in order to protect his pension. Canadians have no confidence in this prime minister or his carbon tax. To this sellout NDP leader, Tuesday is coming. What will it be? Prop up this prime minister again and hike the tax by 61 cents a litre? Or call the carbon tax election Canadian need, Canadians need today? After nine years of NDP liberals, taxes are up, costs are up, crime's up, and time is up. Now that we've seen that clip, let's go to the Speaker's ruling on the point of order. I am also now ready to rule on the point of order raised on September 27th, 2024 by the member for Edmonton Strathcona concerning an alleged personal insult made by the member for Calgary Heritage during a statement delivered pursuant to Standing Order 31. In her intervention, the member for Edmonton Strathcona alleged that the member from Calgary Heritage used a personal insult directed at the member for Burnaby South earlier that day in his statement. She noted that the chair had made a ruling recently about personal insults directed towards other members. She suggested that the member for Calgary Heritage should be asked to withdraw his comment and apologize. As I indicated in my ruling of September 26, 2024, I remain very concerned about the tendency to use overly personal criticism and insults. I also concluded my ruling, found at page 25926 of the debates, by inviting, and I quote, members to be more judicious in their choice of words and behavior. If they are not, the chair will have no choice but to discipline these measures who pers- members rather who persist in their unparliamentary behavior unquote La présidence exa- the chair has reviewed the statement made by the member for calgary heritage and finds su- certain words indeed constituted a personal attack on the member for burnaby south calgary heritage should have been aware that his words were problematic as I had warned one of his colleagues a few days before during statements by members against using the exact same terms. As I've stated before, there are ways to make our point without resorting to personal insults. As a result, the member for Calgary Heritage will not be recognized until such time he withdraws his offending words. I ask all members, I thank all members for their attention. As you can see, the member from Calgary Heritage hasn't really said anything that hasn't been said before, but there are new rules in the House of Commons made by Speaker Fergus that nobody can refer to another member by a false title or insult that member in the House. So this member now has to withdraw his comments or not be recognized by the Speaker. Now, I'm not sure if that means he can't vote until he withdraws his comments, but I would imagine that is the case. As a result of that ruling, Andrew Shear stood up and brought this point of order to the floor. The Honourable Member from uh, Regina Capella is rising on a point of order. Yes, Mr. Speaker, just flowing from the rulings you just gave in which you indicated that you wouldn't recognize members who refused to withdraw, uh, you ordered the Prime Minister to withdraw his Uh, libelous and baseless personal accusations. He refused to do so. You gave him multiple opportunities. If you check the Hansard for that day, you will see that he in fact did not withdraw the term or the phrase that you ordered him to. Uh, He ignored your ruling and uh, we would expect that the same application would be made on the government as you have just made on the opposition. So I hope that you'll come back to the House with a ruling on this question uh, because it is a, a, a very similar situation as to what you have just ruled on. So I'd formally request that you look at the answer from that day. I'm sure you will see that the Prime Minister ignored your direction, did not withdraw his remarks, and the same sanction should apply 
on both sides of the House. I thank the Honourable Member from uh, Regina Capel uh, for raising that order. I will, if necessary, I will come back to the House. At the time, if I recall, uh, the Chair had felt that, that the comments had been uh, withdrawn, but I will check Hansard and I will come back to the Honourable Member. As you can see, the Speaker is finally being called out for not disciplining the Prime Minister in the same manner that he disciplines Conservatives. How he'll rule on this point of order is yet to be determined, but I can imagine that he'll probably rule in favour of himself and the Prime Minister and not require the Prime Minister to withdraw his comments. But that's just my opinion. I'd love to know what you think. Put your comments down below. And while you're at it, please like this video. Share with your friends and on social media. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and hit that bell notification so you never miss another video. Also, please join me on Thursday evenings at 6 p.m. Pacific time where I have a live stream and I invite you to join in on the conversation. Finally, I do have links in the description of this video to all of my social media, including a link to my website where you can sign up for the Canadian Firearm Safety Course. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.